Okay, so now uh, what I'm going to show is how to um, run the uh, source analyzer um, to um, look at the vulnerabilities in your code. So I'm going to show the command line option first and then uh, how to generate the report for the vulnerabilities and then view it in a um, GUI based interface called this audit workbench. Okay, so uh, first of all, after you type your Java code, you should make sure it compiles fine without any error. Okay, so I have uh, a sequence of programs which we are going to uh, look in class. Um, so this is a C example, that's the basic um, uh, uh, Java program and it will be found to have some vulnerabilities and we are going to iteratively improve it and as we improve uh, or remove the vulnerabilities um, the source code analysis is going to sh tell you which vulnerabilities are, are still there so eventually you want to remove all of them and want only what is called um, the poor logging practice vulnerability that's not really a vulnerability it's kind of a um, weakness in your program because this poor logging practice is due to the print statements that you have in your program so for each print statement it gives it vulnerability so we just want to keep improving until we reach a point where we get just get those poor logging practice vulnerabilities okay so let me show you so the first thing to do is to make sure your program compiles fine so for that uh, just compile using java c sc example dot java that's my program name and uh, <coughs> After you compile your Java program, now run using source analyzer. Now, um, the basic command is to say hyphen source analyzer, one single word, and then space hyphen scan. And uh, if you, so I'm not showing this thing right now. Let me tell you what happens if I don't have that option. So let me just use source analyzer, space hyphen scan, SCA example dot Java. So it's going to give you a warning telling that uh, since the version of the Java compile uh, JDK that you want to use is not um, mentioned, it's going to assume 1.4 as the default version. So whatever is corresponding to 1.4, it will compile based on that. If you use some classes, say the scanner or things like that, which have been which which were not in 1.4, which were incorporated after 1.4, say 1.5, I believe then if you don't put the JDK version then it may not recognize such classes so that's why it's better to explicitly mention what version of Java JDK you want to use in the analysis for the you want the analyzer to basically to use so you can say JDK hyphen JDK 1.7 that indicates this JDK version you want to use and then hyphen scan uh, 1.7 I think is the maximum it can go okay and then hyphen scan and SCA example dot Java so now we won't get that warning so it basically will go through uh, the code build the model analysis do the analysis and then list out the vulnerabilities so let's look at the vulnerabilities what it gives now Okay, so you have uh, some high level vulnerabilities, some medium level, uh, low level vulnerabilities. Okay, so these are different vulnerabilities in different lines of code. So this is just a command line option uh, where it shows you all the vulnerabilities. Now, so you have to go into each of these lines. So these are the line numbers in your program and see what can you do to fix those problems and you can rerun those things. and. Um, uh, see if those vulnerabilities are uh, still listed or not now there's another way to again we are not going to go into the specific details of the, each of these vulnerabilities that's we'll go through in class and uh, it's also in the study doc, a case study document that I'm going to post in the course website all right so uh, what you can also do is as a command line option let me uh, as a command line option you can forward those results to I already have uh, results SCA, so if you do that, it's going to just replace it. So either way is fine, but I'm going to just delete it. So um, 
I'm going to forward this to some name, file name, and make sure the extension um, is FPR. I'm not sure what is the full form of it, but this is the format we need to use for the files for to store the results in order to open them in this audit workbench. So you can say source analyzer space um, hyphen JDK 1.7 for the version, then hyphen scan, and then SE example dot Java the Java file name, and then hyphen F, and then results SCA.fpr. If you do that, it's not going to show all the vulnerabilities in command prompt. It's going to put everything together and uh, yeah, all this vulnerabilities will be saved in this results SCA file. So it could be any name, as long as it has an FPR extension, that should be fine. So now we will see uh, after it stops, we can open uh, this in this audit workbench and see um, how we can look at the vulnerabilities. So. Um, Okay, so HP 45 CA and then click on audit workbench. Okay, so these are some of the things that I have already tried it out, so don't worry about it. So if you have not tried anything so far or opened anything so far, this will be blank here so uh, we click on open project so that will ask uh, so this is the folder so if it, the right folder doesn't open up go to the folder where you ran and save the slcca.fpr file so open that fpr file now Okay, so now you can see, so this is a project summary, it lists the critical vulnerabilities, a high, low and all these things. So you can close this. Now if you look at the left hand side, there are some critical vulnerabilities. So I have hard coded the password here, right? So that's one hard coding, there's another hard coding in line 21, that's here and uh, the, um, this is these are two are critical so same thing exists in two places and then this is a um, high level vulnerability path manipulation and then no medium but there are some low level vulnerabilities too and that's where you have the poor locking practice vulnerability that's due to the print statements that's that you have in different lines so if you click on the line it will show you that line number so uh, even here, if I click on this, click on this, it shows you that line number. Now it highlights that line. And as well as if you click on details, it explains you the vulnerability. What is it, what it is, and what are its consequences. You leave it in the code and all these things. And then some recommendations by the developer. So it may or may not be applicable to this particular context, but it is a general uh, suggestion that you could considered you incorporating if uh, you think it you can fix the problem now you could even do the modification here like you can use this as an editor and do the modification and save it so if you press ctrl s it's going to save this but the only drawback is you cannot compile and uh, up, uh, get an updated report right here what you have to do is you have to still close this uh, and then go back to your command prompt and compile it. So make sure it compiles without any problem, the modification. And then um, run the source analyzer again and generate the FPR file. Okay. So it has stopped, so let's go to audit dog bench, so let's open this result, so this is the new one. <coughs> now let's see, uh, the number of such critical vulnerabilities, the hard-coded password, one of them 
and the line 14 was gone but if you click on this and see there's a new vulnerability now which is the um, empty password initialization vulnerability you know, so it's not a good practice to initialize a uh, password string like this to uh, empty string okay and uh, that's a vulnerability that could be exploited so as you see if you fix, fix one patch uh, without much taking uh, the consequences into consideration you may have in, uh, you may add some more flaws bugs into your code so that's what has happened here okay so uh, we in, in the document uh, in the case study document that will be posted on the website you can see all those vulnerabilities and the solutions for each of them how we increment, uh, incrementally fix all of them okay so we're not going to go through this details here so we will eventually fix all those vulnerabilities and then have only the poor logging practice vulnerability as the uh, vulnerability that's being listed okay so uh, so make sure uh, you read the details documents so for some cases it may not be listed depends on the vulnerability but they will be very handy in giving you an idea of what strategy to incorporate to fix those vulnerabilities so of course the case study document I'm going to post and go over an example in class will cover um, majority if not all of them or uh, of the uh, of the strategies you need to know okay so let me close this I'll stop this.